Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. I have a really cool recycling project today and I love these types of projects because we're using our book pages and we're using serial liners in our project and I think that's just great because these are not going into the landfill and we're making something beautiful. So this is what they are. I'll just show you what we've got over here and then we'll continue with our tutorial. I have the steps here so we'll go through all of that and we'll make one together. So basically what they are, you can see over here, I made one just clear with no decoupaging um, and it's a pocket over here and then another pocket at the back. So what I did to jazz them up a little bit is I decoupaged some napkins and I'm going to do that in today's tutorial and I've used, you know, the same images on it, both sides like this or I've got some with different images, this one's different, and then I have also some that I've, you can see here, embossed after the project was complete, so I put it through my embossing machine to make it even more special, but it's not a requirement, of course, you know, whatever you, whatever you decide. So, how would you use it? I will show you an example at the end of the video, but basically I have stuffed it with some tags and things like that to go in there and then on the other side as well and I was just thinking that essentially really you could have a few made like this let's not use this one because I've got tags in there already so you could have a few made like this and then you could simply punch some holes one here one here add a jump ring or what are they called those round clip things I can't think of a name and then you even have a little booklet that you can fill up with your ephemera it's just an idea that came to me now but that's not what we're going to do today we're simply going to create them and then I'm going to show you how I would use it in my journal let's get started just a side note you don't have to use book pages or serial bag liners if you don't have them you can use scrapbook paper any type of paper that you have and instead of the serial liners, you can use something like this, sheet protectors, something like that. All right, let's go. Oh, but the sound. Is that creepy? It is a little bit. I have my book page ready. So the first thing I want to do is just tidy up this ripped edge here. And I also like to have the same amount of white on both sides so I'm just going to trim this edge a little bit as well. Now that my book page is ready I'm going to decoupage some napkin onto it to decorate it but you can skip this step completely and just go to step two and you will end up having something like this so just a clear book page but I really like this look of adding a little bit of napkin just to make it a little bit more interesting I guess so that's what I'm going to do I am going to decoupage these images on both sides so first I want to just cut out the image that I'm going to use and I'm going to do that by applying a little bit of wet edging so it'll be easy for me to rip the paper the napkin I mean and now this will give me a nice ripped edge and I will only have my image to work with so I'm going to do this very gently, make sure that I don't rip into my image. Okay, here is my image ready to go and it's just slightly bigger than my page but that's okay. Once I actually glued this down and once it's dry, I'm going to trim off that excess. So I am just using a mixture of PVA glue, white glue mixed with a little bit of water and I'm going to apply it directly onto my image of the book page. But I just want to protect my desk so I'll pop this underneath and then I'm applying directly over the top of my napkin and I'm being careful not to rip the napkin as I'm applying my wet glue you can use Mod Podge or anything that can uh, easily be applied and the reason why I add a little bit of water to my PVA glue is just to make it a bit more runnier so it's easier to apply so you can see it kind of drips that's how runny it is so I use two parts glue to one part water approximately okay so I made sure that I went completely over the top of the image 
I can go ahead and trim this off now or rip it off but I'm going to dry let this dry first and then I'll come back and I'll do the other side okay so that's now nearly completely dry I'm just going to trim off these bits over here okay and now I will repeat the process on the other side okay so that's all now dry on both sides you will notice quite a bit of warping on the paper that's because the glue that i used is wet glue and of course it's going to warp your paper so what i usually would do is make a whole stack and then leave them under something heavy overnight to flatten out but it's not a huge deal i think today i'm just going to proceed with the project i don't think it's going to matter so the next thing we're going to do is place the book page into your serial liner so this is my serial liner over here that I'm using. What I do is I make sure that I wash these serial liners in advance, um, just in case if, you know, somebody's allergic to something. I want to make sure, and just, you know, for hygiene reasons in general, I want to make sure that that's completely washed. But if you don't want to use serial liners, you can also use something like this, like sheet pr protectors. Now what I want to do is I want to place the book page into the liner, and I want to leave space all around my book page. I think that will do. So now I've left, you can see this here where everything was glued down, the, um, the liner bag. So I'm going to be trimming all of that off. And I want to leave clean edges over here. So I want to leave quite a bit of edging around so then I can uh, tidy all of that up once I've finished sewing. Here we go. So it doesn't have to be perfect in there. It can be crooked. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. You don't have to do any measuring. You don't have to have straight sides, nothing like that. So I have my book page in here. And the next thing I'm going to do is sew around. I'm going to do that on camera. So I'm just sewing around these three edges and I'm leaving the top open. Or if you like, you can sew around these three edges and leave the side open. If by any chance you are wondering about an alternative to sewing, then I'm not really sure if uh, maybe a fusing tool would work. Glue will not work. I've tried gluing things onto this before and they just peel right off. So I don't think glue is going to work. And that's why I'm going with my sewing machine. So I'll be leaving a top opening, which means I'm going to start somewhere at the top, either this side or this side, it doesn't matter. Let's say I start here and then I'm just going to sew down down the bottom and then back up the top and finish there and here we go so i'm starting at the top and just want to make sure i'm lining everything up and i'm going to use a zigzag stitch and now i'm just going to back stitch to make sure that that doesn't start unraveling so i'll go back a little bit and now i'm just going to continue sewing all the way down flip it around before I start sewing down this way, I just want to make sure that everything is nice and flat and I'm just following my book page. So making sure that I'm not sort of sewing, you know, crooked. I want to sew, sew straight. And once again, making sure that everything is flat in there. And now I'm going to finish my sewing. Once I come to the end, I'm going to do another little back stitch. So because I've back stitched, I can just go ahead and cut these off, but I like to get them all on the same side, the threads I mean, and tie a knot just to be sure that, double sure that it's not going to start unraveling. So I just pull on one of my little threads here and get my second one on the same side. I do the same over here. I'm just gonna pop this there to hold it in place. And now I'm just going to tie knots use my little tool to get all the way to get my knot right up next to that page and then trim it off here we go so i can see that i have a missing uh, a skipped stitch over here which tells me that my needle is blunt and needs to be changed because i know that my tension is fine but that's just a little characteristic that is part of the project and it's just going to be staying there for now our last step is to cut off the excess liner so i'm using my pinking shears 
it doesn't have to be pinking i think it looks really nice with this zigzag stitch you can just use your scissors so i like to leave a little bit of space uh, i want the bag to be sort of visible on the side but you can always trim it right down to the book page I think also leaving space up here will be easier for you to find the opening of the bag. If you trimmed it all the way down to the book page, it might be hard. It might be fiddly to find the opening, if that makes sense. So that's another reason why I like to leave space all around or leave extra bag all around. And here we go. These little offcuts I'm going to send into our plastic bag recycling program that we have in our community so that's not going into the bin and this is the completed project so you see what I mean you can find the opening really well you have your opening here to place little goodies in there and then over here so it's two little pockets so you can see little crinkles in the bag it doesn't bother me but if it's something that gets on your nerves you can always put it through your embossing machine and I think it adds a little bit even more extra um, sort of a touch it does take away a little bit from the image the embossing but it looks really nice and i think if you when you fill up your bags like this if you have embossing on the bag it actually looks a little bit better so you can see this one no embossing and then when i add my goodies i think the embossing looks quite nice because you once you've got your goodies in there you can't really see the image so the embossing adds an extra little touch gives it more of a professional look I guess but I like it either way if you don't have an embossing machine it's really no big deal I think it still looks really really cute just as it is so I have a journal complete journal over here and I just pop this right at the start here on the first page this is a naked journal so no embellishing and having a little something in there with little embellishments that people can actually use i think it gives it such a beautiful little touch so what i would do is simply clip this onto a page like this maybe have a little charm hanging off hanging off off the paper clip looks beautiful and i don't know i just really 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 like it and also i love the i love the sound of it too which helps very very pretty and of course it doesn't have to be in a journal it can be you know part of happy mail or part of little gift packs or you can have it in a journal you can keep your receipts in there or you can even put photos in there you know there's lots and lots of different ways to use it, it essentially it's just a pocket a clear pocket you can see exactly what's inside and there's two pockets bonus I hope you guys enjoyed this project i'm going to pop this here on screen so you can take a screenshot not that you really need instructions because it's so simple and straightforward but here we go anyway let me know what you guys think i think this is a cool project because we're using up our book pages and our cereal bags and we're just making something out of nothing and i think they look really cute in journals so i hope you enjoyed thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye